part two, the bike. I think this is the highest opportunity to gain speed. And so what are the elements that you can do, no matter how fit you get on the bike, no matter how nice your bike is and how much money you spent on it, how do you get the most speed? Well, the first element is the big one. We can't bypass this, terrain management. If you aim to stick to one power throughout your race in a very narrow range, you are leaving speed on the table. And if you stick to one cadence range, so just one leg speed all the way through, you are leaving speed on the table. If you want to get the biggest yield of speed relative to your trained potential, your heart rate, your power, and your cadence should vary. Here are the steps to help you with this. Now, this is an in-person or video-based coaching. I can't do it all on this show, but I can give you some actionable steps. Number one, and this is the important one, where are your eyes? Where are you placing your focus? If you want to get best speed return, your eyes should not be constantly on your metrics and meters. You want to have your eyes up the road. So you want to be looking at the terrain and so that you can plan, you can feel the grade changes and you can respond. And as you're coming up on hills, as the grade goes up, as gravity is working against you, your effort and your power should creep up a little bit. That's normal. And as you're cresting, as the grade starts to dissipate, that hill or little grade that was going up starts to get flatter towards downhill, you should always be building speed. Now, this isn't a bang. This is a smooth build of speed. And you use increasing leg speed, increasing effort for a bit, just four, five, six, seven seconds worth, and adding gears as the grade dissipates. It's a simple rule. Whenever you're going uphill, as it crests and the grade dissipates, you need to go faster. So we've done two so far. Number one, as the grade builds up and gravity works against you, you should be putting in more effort and power should go up. As you're cresting, you should be building speed really smoothly. And then on the downhills, you should absolutely be continuing to build speed, but that's the place that you're not chasing power. And so if somebody was looking to average give or take 200 watts over the course of a race, they wouldn't be distributing 200 watts on the hills, over the crests, and on the downhills. You would see high variability. It would be higher, a little bit higher, as you're going up a grade. It will be considerably higher just for a short snapshot as you go over the crests, and it will probably under that average as you've built speed and chasing. And there's a lot of physics behind that, but it's a feeling. It's a flow. But I tell you, the only way that you can really do this is through experience, actually going out and playing, and coaching. That's how you're going to improve this. You're never going to get it out of the metrics. And that's why we have so much success when a person comes to a training camp with us, because we can help them understand why, then we can do some one-to-one -one coaching in an applied setting so that they can actually, and this word's important, feel it. Another element that you can do from anywhere in the world is train with a platform that actually simulates that. And if you combine it with some real feedback and coaching, whew, it becomes powerful. Now, that's what we do at Purple Patch. And I'll just tell you the truth here, and I don't own any stock uh, in this, I don't get any referral or anything like that. But it is the platform that we use at Purple Patch that is accessible outside of Purple Patch Coaching, and that's Velocity. That is the only program on the market that actually simulates genuine real-world conditions around this terrain management. And I tell you something, when you feel it on that platform, and if you amplify that with real coaching with people that you understand, two-way video, how we do it at Purple Patch, it's, oh, this is it. Because this is, and, and I can't 
overemphasize this to you. I'm, I, I am absolutely telling you the truth. What I'm talking about with terrain management on the bike, if you're a triathlete, by a country mile, this is your biggest opportunity. I hate the phrase game changer. This is a game changer. It is a direct speed gainer. It doesn't matter how strong you are, what your FTP is, how resilient you are, how many miles you've done. If you're not working on mastering terrain management, you're never going to optimize your speed potential. So you can do this. You can do it with some real in-person coaching and going out and playing and feeling the terrain change. You can do it leveraging a platform that at least gets you 90% of the way there on the concepts and then going outside and making it real. This is incredibly important. And so terrain management, key number one. The second building block, no matter what your fitness, is to ride the environment. So we've talked about terrain, hills, crest of hills, going downhill, all really important. The second element that happens in almost any race is the environment. So let's talk about this. If you are riding and you have a headwind, in other words, you're riding into the wind, it's more difficult. You tend to go a little bit slower. And so what should you do as a rider to help you get through that section of road as well as you can to give bigger speed return? Well, there's a couple of components that are really important here. And these are really simple to remember, but they're really important for you. The first is if you are measuring your power, when you've got a wind against you, a headwind, your power should be higher. It's very similar in concept to if you're going up a grade. Okay, you've got something, a force pushing against you, and it's actually physiologically a little bit easier to generate power. So if we're using our 200 watt average, I would expect to see with a headwind, depending on how strong it is, 210, 215, 220, 225, even 230. So you're getting up there at 10 or 15%, even up to 20% more output to actually apply a force against the thing that's going against you. And that is a good investment in effort, okay? Because it's going to actually give you incrementally a bigger speed return when you've got a force against you. Imagine you're going 17 miles an hour. If you put in that extra effort and you go 19 miles an hour, that's an extra two miles an hour. So that's important to you. The second component is I actually lean counterintuitively into riding a slightly bigger gear. And so rather than spinning on the bike, whew, this is hard, spinning, 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 you actually want to put it into a pretty big gear and utilize what we call strength endurance on the lower end of range of your cadence. Now this isn't a huge delta, but you might, if you naturally sit at 80 or 85 revolutions per minute, depending on the strength of the wind, you might be at 70, 75, 78 RPM. So a bit more tension on the chain that's allowing constant tension, really, really important. The third component is you wanna make yourself slippery. So whether you're in a time trial position or road position, you wanna try and reduce your cross-sectional area so that you can reduce drag. Because wind are forced against you, it really slows. So you don't wanna be sitting up there, you don't wanna have your head high looking through the middle of your eyeball, you wanna get sneaky, quiet and small while staying supple so that you can reduce drag. That's gonna give you, relative to whatever power you can get out, the best speed return. How about you've got another section of road and you have a tailwind? Well. Physics portrays that the faster we go, so we're getting faster and faster and faster, for every little half a mile an hour of speed gain, we need to incrementally add exponentially more power, more and more power to get incremental speed gains, alrighty? So what that tells us is that chasing power is not smart when you've got a tailwind. Instead, just enjoy the ride. So don't chase your average power. If you're riding along and the environment is quiet and you look down and you see really low power, you've probably got a tailwind. And so in that case, you can add a little bit of a gear, so add a bit more tension, drift your cadence a little bit higher, and just maintain easy tension on the chain. 
And if you're going fast without that much input, well, lucky you, because it ain't about who generates the most power, it's who goes fastest. And so that's an opportunity to actually remember to manage your resources, keep the calories going in, but keep the bike flowing. Really important stuff. And that is how, no matter how fit you are and prepared you are, that's how you can think about getting free speed on the bike.